A. Uh, hello, thank you for joining us for this perfect arc run. I am Zero IF, otherwise known as Endeavor Gamer. You can just call me Iffy. Behind me, on my right here, I have my good friend Zuni Kami. He is here just mainly for moral support, make sure I can get through this without being way too nervous. <laughs> and behind me on the left is uh, my other good friend, Marinthiu. He came all the way from Germany to try and help me uh, with some notes and to help me with any commentary in case I should uh, slow down a little bit and, uh, and not able to talk too much. It's, it, it's just five pages of notes, not, nothing serious. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're going to try and give Morals really fast pace. So trying to explain anything of the story at all is not going to happen. But in general, we're going to rescue an AI, we're going to rescue an alien, we're going to rescue the president, and in the end, we're just going to wipe out an alien race completely. No, so nothing special. Uh, just uh, not, what, nothing what too do. big here. And in the very first level, as I start, I'm going to this jumps right into a clip that's either the easiest uh, glitch in the game or the hardest glitch in the game. We shall see what happens during this run. And with that, I shall be ready to go. And right. uh, I'll let Marin count down for me. Can I get the audience on a five, four, three, two, one? Let's go! All right, everybody, welcome to Perfect Dark XBLA. This is the special agent difficulty. It's not as easy as the easiest one, Agent, but it's also not near as difficult as Perfect Agent. It's a nice balance in between. It's just a couple Are more shields less that you have on your character, L less auto-aim, enemies deal more damage, just the usual stuff that you get when difficulty changes. As you all saw, we did a nice little clip through some of a not-so-good geometry to get down to the floor below. We're going to try to do it again. And we got them both correct. Nice. First try, that saves a good 10 seconds overall. We're going to fall perf in a perfect spot to land right, to throw the mine right on that guard instead of right there where it's supposed <laughs> to go. And I think they just failed the objective for me. Oh, it's not failed. That's cool. OK, good start, good start. And four objectives complete. First mission fit done. All right. In that takes us right into this second mission. We're just going to find out what the guys were doing in this, in this wonderful building and uh, rescue the AI, as we said in the beginning. We don't quite know that it's an AI yet. We just know that it's some kind of weird doctor. But we're just going to go with the, our wonderful spy bomb drone thing that we have, because we need to wait for something to open us other doors. We had to wait for a little floor cleaning bot to open that door for us. So while we were waiting, we just went ahead and took this flying camera that we have to inside this radioactive isotope to take a picture because why not I get a picture of it for some reason. For now, we're going to disarm these guards, try and get as much ammo as we can just to have some extra ammo. Now, since we activa uh, I activated some computers, I turned on another cleaning bot. The reason being is he's going to deactivate some lasers for us, but we're under a very generous timer. So generous, in fact that we can just really goof off for a little bit here. Any kind of brute force which computers you actually need to interact with. But in the end, you get what you need. And There's going to be two rooms mm. where those four computers are going to be lying around. Or three rooms, technically, but we don't really mess with one of them. we got to kill these two guards here. There's one correct computer that will turn off. And uh, it'll be a, like a sound effect that we heard there. We can't do that unless we kill two guards, but we don't have to kill the two guards, really, if we just go around and deactivate them ourselves. So the timer is so generous that the bot is still right here. So, And even though it's generous, you really do not want to miss the cycle, because otherwise you need to wait for the robot to go all the way around the area again. So that's a whole minute that you would lose from just going through here. Yeah, technically, we could skip these lasers with what's called the laser skip, but it's so precise, and you deal a lot of damage to yourself if you miss it on Special Agent. So we don't even bother with it on the full game runs. Next up, we're going to be ha uh, unlocking this door with this data uplink. We're going to have a bunch of guards shooting at us, dealing damage. We're going to try to manipulate them to not come up next to us like that. Sometimes if you stay ducked, they will miss you a lot more, but they will also try to come up to you and melee you, which will do a lot of damage. 
So we try to manipulate them by standing up as soon as they look like they're about to run towards us. But anyway, running, we just run straight to the end here, and that's the end of the mission. Speaking of running, why, why are you going diagonally? For the Xbox 360 and uh, the N64, which is uh, this game is a remake of the N64 game. It's basically the same game, just remade from the ground up, just n n all the same original glitches, except for any that require lag. Another difference is strafing is a bit harder and weirder to do because it requires a very specific, they call it like the perfect spot for, uh, for the left stick. And not every three, Xbox 360 controller has that. The perfect spot for perfect. So it has some sort of like RNG to it. You have to get lucky. I've owned about 20 controllers and only about five of them could uh, speed run this game. So it's, it's really, really strange and who knows exactly what's causing it. Even brand new controllers have trouble if you get unlucky. But basically on this mission, we, uh, tr previous mission, we rescued a sentient laptop because this is the year 2023. We have sentient laptops, flying cars, everything. Now after, uh, we have to bring that sentient laptop back to the roof to take him away. But first we got to kill all these bodyguards that's going to try and stop us. And in this room here, there's going to be five of them. They have pretty good aim, but just not enough aim to where they can really do much of anything on special agent. And them turning the light off doesn't really care for us because we have night vision, because we're a really good agent. And we have an enemy hovercopter circling around the building, but thankfully there's just a convenient rocket launcher With lock sitting, on. s sitting around. Yeah. Secondary function just locks on targeted rocket and it can just blow up the hovercraft without us really aiming at it, saving a lot of time. Now in Carrington Villa, we had to, uh, you might have blinked and missed it, but I shot two people to rescue a hostage. Now I'm going to try and get a little uh, CMP-150 here. Try and take care of some s snipers that's on these roofs. They die in one shot. And thankfully nice on the XBLA off. version, we have this very overpowered setting exclusive where we can make the sniper rifle auto-aim. And it helps this segment a lot. And Good. just well, and just like that, the snipers are gone. Now we have to go down to the bottom floor to uh, turn on some uh, power to power a wind generator. And then when the generator is active, we're just going to get the hell out of there with the AI again because it got stolen from us as we tried to escape. And it's like going a lot of things on with the story, but <sighs> it's complicated, isn't it? Always in life. Yep. Now that we're in a basement, we have to get a key card that only drops from the final guard you kill. It does not matter which order you kill these guards. It's always the last one you kill. We'll have the key card that will end the mission. So th the point of this is just to kill them as fast as you can in the mission. And there's the door key. And then it ends instantly. Now we're in prob uh, to <laughs> the shortest mission that has the most going on, I would say. And good music. And my favorite song in the game, just nice, calm. Wait for these guys to go by. They are civilians, and if we accidentally get a civilian caught in this explosion, which gives us a what's called a bomb spy, basically a hovering bomb we're going to use to uh, do an objective a different way than intended from the game. We have to kill these guards. But using that bomb spy, we don't have to hack a taxi that's going to crash into uh, something else and cause a distraction. So I just go into the sewers, pick up a remote mine, throw it at a door that's going to do something for the next mission. And the mission's over just like that. Now we are in the G5 building where we see our first uh, cases of the cloaked guards. They usually have a set AI, so you can learn where they are. Sometimes they don't really go where they're supposed to, but most of the time they do. So it's that was just me being bad, um, but yeah, we, the key card drops on the final one you kill. And it's not even RNG, it's just the way the AI works, there's nothing really random about it, you just have to know how they work. Now we got to turn off a bunch of lasers that are up here on these ducts, and we're going to come over here and 
According to the story, we're about to get some uh, video footage of an evil organization saying their plans out loud. That will be used for later in the story. You call we have me to do that. We have to do that before they set the alarm off, or else we'll fail the mission if they set the alarm off. But because we did it first, the alarm do uh, doesn't fail the mission. Now we are in a good minute, 20 second long auto scroller where I just have to kill all these guards before they kill me. So if there's any donations, feel free to read them out for three or four, five donations. You got it. Uh, Captain Valros donated $25 to say, I used to play Perfect Dark for the N64 all the time as a kid. Took me until I was an adult to complete all levels on Perfect Agent. Very <laughs> unforgiving game. Good luck with Elvis. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We'll need it. Keeping that Elvis train rolling. Uh, oh, Zero Baca, or Zero Baca, sorry if I've mispronounced that, so, uh, donated $50 to say, Happy GDQ. Here's to another event benefiting Doctors Without Borders. Time to save Elvis. We also had $25 from Antha, who said, I got to watch most of GDQ today with some of my best friends. Can't wait for the rest of the marathon. Put this towards our next bonus game and get more GDQ. Watching with your friends, that's what we all uh, are here for. One more while this safe is opening. I have a very appropriate one from X-File, your FASFA X, who says, uh, donates $10, rather, and says, perfect dark, perfect run. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. And with that, we are done with that. Now we are in one of the more difficult missions if we get unlucky and they uh, land a lot of shots. These guys have uh, normally a very inaccurate pistol, but due to the way their AI is set up, they can make it one of the most accurate guns in the game. And also where we're headed for the first objective, any one of these guys can pull a grenade and instantly just end our whole career. Like that, he threw it instantly. Holy moly. Whew. I got it. But yeah, we're casually in Area 51, and as the donations just said, Elvis is going to happen. He's, uh, he's an alien, so we're yep. just going to casually rescue him. Yep. We're just casually breaking in and into Area 51 to steal some aliens. That's a minefield, by the way, but uh, we know where the mines are, so... Yeah, if you line yourself up with the right part of that H, you'll dodge the mines every time. Except when you don't. All right, now coming up is one uh, very super risky strat, and we're going to go for it anyway. We've got to call that elevator and get back up there before it closes by shooting that rocket against the wall, and it will get rid of that shield that we conveniently picked up. That blew up some lasers that would have normally tried to block us from getting back up, and we made it before the elevator closed. That's really hard to do if we do that segment wrong, so I'm glad we got well that. Now, uh, we just charge right towards the end of the mission. Ain't really nothing much left here. Although there is one guard that tries to throw a grenade every time. Oh, he threw it. Okay, I stopped him before it left his hand. Nice. Now we just wait on this elevator. And like with many other missions, when you escape, you're at the end of the mission. All right, just as he said, he's another member of our spy organization. We're about to meet up with him. He, he just becomes another NPC that we have to worry about, not, not that good and fun. But just like that, we have, we're done with this one. Now we're into an even more annoying mission. That's the theme of the Area 51 missions. They just get more and more annoying. We're going to call down this elevator while hopefully avoiding that guy's bullets like we did. We're going to disarm him and hope he runs off. Uh, all according to plan. Just casually dance around bullets. A little bit of matrix view. That's why this can be a little dangerous, because sometimes dancing around those bullets does not work as intended. We did not make it too fast. If we made it like really fast, we could have beat this elevator. But it's all good. We're gonna, there's going to be four guards to say hi to us when we get up there, so we're going to throw this dragon, which it doubles as a proximity mine. And guards in, in this game do not like fire or smoke at all. They will instantly die if they get anywhere near it. So throwing that dragon got, uh, just gets rid of them instantly. And yeah, so there are some weapons that you can uh, use as a proximity mine as their special ability and that just blew up the wall conveniently where we need to go through. Yeah. Now we're about to steal this guy's uniform to become a doctor. Now we are just basically a doctor. We got to go through and we're going to find the evidence that 
these people have indeed kidnapped some aliens. But my health is looking kind of bad, so I'm gonna get this backup shield here. Because you can lose a lot of health in the second half of this mission. Kind of like that. He, he's, 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 hi, hi yeah. Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> and as you heard, he's a spy. And so they, they kind of notice if you get too close to them or do something that they do not expect from someone working there. Uh, we're going to use this x-ray scanner to get photographic proof that there is indeed an alien in there. It's a timer, so we just got to wait until it says objective complete. Now we're just running toward the second to last room here. These people think we're the doctor that we stole these lab clothes from, thankfully. So we're gonna go in here and steal that key card from that guard way over there to enter the final room of the stage. And just casually punch that guy because... We're gonna fire one grenade to hopefully kill a few of them that's coming after us. We got a good two of them. That's about what you were looking for, about two of them. And since we have the shield, we're home free. There's nothing really to worry about here. Except I'll just ruin this guy's day. He did nothing wrong, but <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and ruin it anyway. <laughs> Boy, okay. right, this guy always drops a key card. You don't have to kill every guard in this room to get the key card. You can just kill that guy. And now we, we have Elvis. found Elvis. Now we have to revive him. And my least favorite mission in the game, and also one of the longest. The objectives here are to rendezvous, locate the hangar, revive a bodyguard, and escape. Yeah, we gotta take Elvis to the specific room as fast as we can. If we do it fast enough, we're gonna get some remote mines later that's gonna really come in handy. I can't remember exactly quite what the seconds is, but I'm pretty good. I'm pretty sure we got it. These guards have what's called a tranquilizer. We don't care about the first function of the tranquilizer, but the second function, if used correctly, like that was not correctly, is an instant one-hit KO, but it requires you to get up and close and personal. So it's a double-edged sword. So now we're just gonna blow up everybody on our way to meet Jonathan, the other NPC spy that I told you guys about that we have to worry about for this stage. This stage is one where you have to worry about two NPCs and it can get quite annoying. Why do you wiggle around there? We wiggle to it a little technique that for some reason he will just follow you if you're moving left and right. Uh, most uh, good guy NPCs do. You'll see it later in the run. Oh uh, God, I was too late. Don't die. When Jonathan spots a target, he even if they are in their dying position, he will just shoot at them. That was quite unfortunate. But now we are pushing him because pushing him is way faster than him walking himself. Oh, and we're stuck on that thing, <laughs> but that's okay. We got him close enough. We have to take him all the way back up to this room, and he can either be the fastest thing in the wor uh, world, or, or he can just moonwalk. Moon he, he picks and chooses what he wants to do. How random are those cards? Uh, they always spawn when they get there. When we get there, so we just unleash a uh, good old grenade. What we're doing here is, as soon as I walk out of this room, there's gonna be guards shooting at Jonathan while he's planting a bomb in a wall. So we're throwing those in specific spots where if I blow it up, they will die. That's the first group gone. So I'm gonna walk out again. Another group's gonna spawn. And then I'm gonna walk out again. And another group's gonna spawn. Because they really do not like him planting a bomb in that wall. So now, another one spawned, that, that's kind of interesting. We're gonna take care of as many of these guys as we can to make the ending easier. The number of guards that spawn as soon as he start planting the bomb is very random. It can be a little, it could be a lot. Speaking of random, we're gonna plant the alien med pack to revive Elvis and five guards are gonna spawn. One of those guards are chosen at random to be the guard we had to kill to revive Elvis. None of those three were the guards, unfortunate. So now we have to kill every guard until we see objective complete. Okay, it was the very last guard. And it just sat in the, in the bottom left, Matt Pack administered, but it, it, it only happens when you- Oh, I fell off there. Okay, that's, a, that's not a big deal. We're gonna go up here and wipe out any stragglers that don't look like there's any stragglers. And, 
Now both Jonathan and Elvis are gonna come right over here and start the final cutscene of this mission. While I uh, sloppily push Jonathan to a specific location, you can get another donation or two, Red, actually. Absolutely. We have $20 from Z Fresh and the boys saying, Yo. Z Fresh here with the boys. We wish good luck to Zero underscore IF on his Perfect Dark run. We heard he was a legend in the Perfect Dark community. <laughs> Where is Endeavor Gaming, though? <laughs> Donation goes to the runner's choice. Also, dab, sir. Thank you, Z Fresh and the boys. <laughs> so, community wise, we met up through the Hyperdimension Neptunia speedrunning community. That's also why we have all lucky, lucky trinket Neptunia down here. And those guys are part of that community. So thank you very much for that, guys. Thank you very much. With that, though, we have ended that mission. Now we are in one, one of the hardest missions to have for the last room. Like, this whole mission is easy, but the final room of this mission is one of the hardest in the game. Right now, just like the la uh, two missions ago, we're just going to get a disguise from a, someone and we, uh, so we can sneak into a, this air base. And also, like, those bolts from that crossbow. Don't worry, they don't kill. It's, it's just a knockout. Yeah, this is a mission where we're not supposed to kill anyone in the first half, so they give us some, uh, some get-arounds for that, where we just knock them out. Uh, no matter where we shoot them, you can have a bolt in their head, and they're just knocked out. They're fine. They'll wake up in the morning. All right. This door closes, like, really quickly and loses a whole minute because we can't close it, uh, call it back, so we're just going to put that... They call it a drug spy, which is basically a portable version of my crossbow. We're just going to put it there to keep it from closing, and it saves us a minute. Yeah, we needed to pick up that uh, suitcase there because we need to check in our weapons because it's an airport, so obviously you can't have any metal on you, but in the suitcase, it's fine. You can check it in. Yeah, we're going to put everything in the suitcase to get through that security because if we had all of our guns right there in this hallway, we would fail the mission instantly. On, on our way over here, we're going to be calling up an elevator for it to start coming up as we do this other objective here, because that elevator is going to take us to the bottom floor where we end the mission. We're going to hopefully get a dragon from this guy by knocking him out. Nice. And we're going to turn off the thing that's going to detect that there's a bunch of illegal stuff in our suitcase. And, and now we are getting to the bottom floor here, we have some really good music. This is um, the raid theme on my stream, so I make a nice little joke out of it every time I hear this music. Oh god, I'm getting raided. <laughs> Down here, uh, there's two guards and a button on a wall I have to destroy. I'm going to try and destroy the button on the wall as fast as I can and get rid of at least one of those two guards. We have a certain cycle for these lasers that we have to get around. This is the hard part I was talking about, because if we do one slip up, these lasers can just really, and we can also get boosted in it like those guards try to do. But thankfully, first try. That's that. Now we are on the Air Force One. See, throughout this whole game, what we ain't been saying is there's a huge conspiracy to clone the president because the president does not want to co cooperate with the bad guys and uh, they want to just get rid of them and put a, a version of their own president that will listen and do as they say. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show the real president the evidence of what's going on here. So we just picked up the suitcase, which also has the uh, It's like the equipment we're talking we, about. It is the equipment that we checked in on the previous mission. And best voice line coming in. One of the best and most well-known voice lines of this. We're going to do more of that walking, uh, make the president come toward us by hitting left and right. I have no idea how it works, but it, it even worked in GoldenEye. And it only works when they are not talking. And while I was talking, we missed the best line, but oh well. You can't make such accusations without evidence. I assume <laughs> that you have some. Yeah, throw a timeline out there, because a uh, cutscene I just skipped. A different alien race than the one that we rescued. Basically, the bad guys that... This is a weird story. The, the evil alien race that goes against a good alien race that we rescued from Area 41. They're trying to hijack the Air Force One. Because Earth is always at the center of everything. I don't know the story, Okay, Earth. This is all I need to be. <laughs> <It's>... uh. <laughs> For good RNG, because we're escorting the president, we wanted to see him as nice. soon as we opened that door. Yeah, he could be literally anywhere in the plane, but that was good RNG right as soon as we opened that door. And that's that. 
All right, coming, uh, coming up, crash site. The Air Force One has crashed due to the spaceship trying to just infiltrate it. So now we have to rescue the president, kill the fake president, because they did manage to clone him. And the wonderful vehicle that we're using right here is only here because we lowered it from the Air Force One in the previous mission. We did that so quickly we didn't even mention it. Yeah, we, uh, in order to get uh, this hovercraft for this mission, we had to lower it from the previous one, and it's much faster than strafing. So we had to pick up a suitcase that lets us know who the fake president is and where the real president is, and we're going to turn on the distress beacon to let our company know that we're out here. And now I'm going to take this hover bike and position it in a very specific place to do a clip for a safety strap that I came up with many years ago. Get it exactly right. We got to blow up these bots to make the president move later. Now we're going to aim for a mine here. Hopefully kill the Come fake on. president without going to him. But if it misses, I'm going to just go straight to him. I'm going to throw a backup. Ignore those guards. Oh, didn't get we it. missed it, so we're just have to go down there and kill the fake one anyway. Oh, well. And there he is. And yep. he's dead. All right. That was unfortunate, but it is what it is. Now we have to go to disarm mode, and if I place this right, I can just clip right through there and go down here. And disarm him, and he gives us the golden magnum, a one-shot kill magnum that will blow up literally anything in our path. Well, except Elvis. Oh, God. Now we're going to have a guard that can just randomly spawn anywhere in this big, giant field here. That His main goal is to just kill the president and shoot at him, and he does a really good job at it, because when NPCs shoot other NPCs, they all of a sudden have 100% accuracy. So now we are just waiting for the president to come down here to Elvis, so he is safe and secure, and there he is. That was actually really fast. Nice. He has random speeds to run. He ran one of the fastest. This mission, Pelagic 2, is We're a really fast paced Just kill a lot of guards, because there is a crap ton of guards in this stage. We're underwater, by the way, now, just, just, just if you're curious. We're on our way to activate the moon pool lift first, which will uh, lower us in to the next stage at the end of this stage here. Now I'm going to pull out these end grenades here. They are an explosion that goes through floors, and there's guards on the floors below. If I throw those correctly, they're just going to get rid of them so they won't be a problem for me later. Now we're going to go up here and get them to get these guys to turn off the uh, autopilot and GPS. Normally, you got to talk to one of these guys. He'll deactivate the autopilot. And then one of them turns bad, and you have to kill him and then talk to the other one. But if you just knock out the one who turns bad before he turns bad, it works the same way, and it's faster. The alarm turned on. There's some extra guards in the stage now, but it's not really a big deal. Now we have to turn off these green buttons. They are random. There's four greens and four reds. You can only see them with the X-ray vision because reasons. And now we are on our way to rendezvous with Elvis. And if we did it correctly, he's dead. Oh, he survived. Nice. Those two are dead. All right. Three out of four is not bad. Yeah, as you also saw when he equipped the X-ray vision, there's the radial menu in this version of the game, which is a slight version difference to the N64 version as well. So in the N64 version, you would need to hold down the B button to pop up the radial menu, which takes like one second or, or something like that. And in this uh, version, you can just press one button and it pops up immediately, which saves a little bit of time overall. While I'm going up and finishing the mission, feel free to get a donation in. We are just running right to the end. For sure. We have a $100 donation from Crushing Victory saying, let's leave them in the dark with a perfect run with a rare GDQ appearance. Nice. And do the little Easter egg. If we finish the mission with the X-ray on, the cutscene is also in X-ray mode. Now we are into one of the most frustratingly long levels in the game, specifically the Xbox version of Special Agent Deep Sea. The reason being will be made clear later. 
We just gotta kill as many of these guards as we can to keep Elvis from killing them, because it's much faster if we do it. We're on our way to uh, activate a teleportal that Elvis uh, will turn on and warp us to another part of this stage. This is one of the state. Uh, this is the stage in the game where each difficulty, the teleportal will take you to a different part of the stage that you don't see on any other difficulty. And on the special agent stage uh, part, it will take us first. Before I explain that, we have to explain where how we're going to get a bunch of guards that can just randomly duplicate themselves for their sub if they want to. They're supposed to be just like five or so. It looks like there was like six or seven that time. That's usually the, the average. This is the room we're supposed to take Elvis to. Elvis can be just kind of like that. He could just run in circles or he can just run straight here. 110 is a decent time. You can get under one minute if uh, Elvis really is in a good mood. But if Elvis is in a really bad mood, he can take upwards of two minutes. So I will take 110 any day. While he's turning on the teleportal, we can just run straight there because there's nothing that can harm Elvis. Because he can fight for himself. He has a this gun. Right. Now he gave us his gun, which is the far side. It is a one-shot kill gun similar to the Golden Magnum. What we're going to do is kill, well, miss the first shot, kill all these guys. And now we're gonna get behind Elvis because I call this stage the Elvis pushing simulator because he is just so slow even when he's running. So if we do it correctly, we, we just push him to the destination. Push, uh, pushing is really, really hard. So I'm gonna hope we don't make too many mistakes here. And every guard along the way will try to shoot at him, and as I said earlier, NPCs shooting other NPCs, they land every single shot, no matter how far away. So we try to kill those guards before they start shooting at Elvis. And so right now, Elvis doesn't have his weapon, so we can't leave him alone and run in front of him. So. Yeah, he gives, he gives me his main weapon without pulling a back up for some silly reason. Down this hallway, there's guard on the first three corners and then it skips a corner and then one more guard and then after we uh, get done with that there's no guard for a while once we get to this little section right here it just suddenly becomes a bit harder to push so we'll try our best as soon as he gets to this console here it activates a one minute auto scroller where we really just have to protect him ex one minute from now so 308 408 Feel free to read some donations while I protect him from uh, these miniature aliens trying to kill him. For sure. Uh, Split Synergist writes with $20, awesome to see you on the big stage at GDQ Zero. Good luck and may Elvis keep the tomfoolery to a minimum. Thank you very much, Split. We have $25 from Shanna and Brian and I hope this is an inside joke for you guys because I'm gonna look uh, foolish if, uh, if not, but uh, the, the comment says, are we certain there isn't anyone that, quote, isn't a piano commentating? That's exactly what a piano would say. <laughs> okay, good, at least that means something. Okay, <laughs> I wasn't sure. Uh, we also had $10 from Anna who says, thank you for playing Perfect Dark. She's a total queen and you're a king for playing this game. Long live Jonah Dark. Amen. And if we have time for one more. Yep. I'll yeah, throw in a, a ten dollar note from Ryuk Note, who says, "I wish all the good luck to Endeavor Gaming. Let's hope for the best Elvis you can get." Love from Ryuk, and donation goes to Runner's Choice. Thank you very much, Ryu. Now that that protect sequence is done, we can just run right to the teleportal that he activated. He, he once he gets done with that objective, he pulls out a gun. So he's safe. Now we have to kill this, these two, hopefully without shooting that laptop. Sometimes you can shoot that laptop, which will end the mission because he like just dies in one shot. But now it's just a run to the end. You can get in another donation or two because as soon as we get to the end here, we have a, the one and only unskippable cutscene in the game. This bunch of explosions. Alrighty, we have a $100 donation from Blade and Striker who says, we heard you were looking for some bad dudes to help rescue the president. Oh, you already found someone? I guess we'll go back to eating burgers then. 
And we also have $25 from the Shaded Master saying, what a perfect night for this dark speedrun. And that's that mission complete. Right. Now we are in the Kennington Institute, which is just our headquarter building. And they are trying to take over. They are tired of us just ruining their plan, so they decided to just come right to us. So first, we got to... Let's talk about combat boosts. In the original N64 game, when you activate a combat boost, everything in the game, including your player, slows down to a very slow halt. But in the Xbox version, everything but your character slows down. So you can still move really fast. Why, uh, why we use that uh, combat boost in particular will help uh, affect some cycles later and hopefully uh, get Carrington's text to match up perfectly because this mission is all about Carrington finishing up every single text box that he has to say. If, he, uh, if we are just a little bit off on anything, he will wait if about 20 extra seconds to finish saying what he needs to say but to end the mission. We will, and we do have no idea if it's going to be correct until near the end. And the so fingers crossed. Right now difference. we are host uh, rescuing some hostages in the meantime. Each difficulty you're supposed to rescue two more, so in this one you're supposed to rescue four. But the Xbox version is strange in the fact that uh, sometimes you can fail even if you rescue the four. So we're just going to rescue them all. Or as many as we can, so we'll pass the objective every time. And we're about to enter the last room to get these last few here. And then we're going to complete another objective just half a second later by getting an experimental weapon, this RCP-120. It has a secondary fo a function just cloaks us completely at the cost of our ammo draining rapidly. All right, they planted a bomb. We wanted to hear that right there. That means we did this correctly. They planted a bomb and we had to Pack it out of there, so now we go just straight to the end. He said all he needed to say, mission's over as soon as I enter this door. And now we get kidnapped. Yeah, now uh, our character just got kidnapped by the evil aliens. And now we have to just escape from the ship. And as this guy right here has a 50% chance of either not noticing you or noticing you. We were hoping he didn't notice us, but it's not a big deal for him to notice us. It just if he don't notice you, it takes one slash to kill him because NPCs in this game will die in one shot if they don't know you're there. But because he noticed us, it took four or five instead. As long as we know how to dance. That works out. And it's kind of interesting that the aliens took all of our weapon, but they still left us with a knife. So we just brought a knife to a gunfight because I did. Yeah, we Spy always has to, has, a, have, has to have a backup knife. Right now, though, we're, we have a bunch of these... Skedar spawning and we have to kill a specific number of them before moving on and we had really good RNG there We're just collecting some backup ammo for this mauler. Its secondary function eats extra ammo, but turns into a more p Powerful bullet so you'll see most of these just die in one shot. They have a lot more health than humans do So normally they take a lot more shots, but the mauler is just very very strong and about 95% of the time we'll kill in one shot. We, we need to take our time to specifically kill as many of these as we can because Elvis loves fighting these guys even if we're not there and uh, he's not really good at it. He will die really quickly, which will fail the mission, including near the end where without anything we can do about it. It's just pure chance, about a one in 50, where he will die from an enemy that's not even spawned in the stage yet, because of why not programming? So we're going to just hope that don't happen. Yeah. You needed Elvis to down there to uh, access the nav system, and now we blow up the reactor on the ship, and because we don't want to look at explosions, we just let it explode back there. And then the next objective is going to complete after a set timer. There it is. And then, last but not least, I want to go ahead and get Please die. Please die. The bridge. Please die. Without dying, preferably. And all this time, Elvis is going to start walking up here. And so we hope that he doesn't die on the way. That's why we killed all of them. 
Yep, those elevators are so slow, the first one is, but the second one's really quick. I think what happened was it opened the frame. I tried to close or open it up, so I ended up closing it. It went all the way back up. I yeah. think that's why that one took forever. Unlike Mass Effect earlier, we can't really skip elevators. <laughs> So now, at the end here, we have to kill these three Skedar, and it will activate a timer as soon as the final one's dead. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. Elvis died to an enemy that was not there. Nothing we can do about it, just restart the stage. So here we go again. We are bringing a knife to a gunfight. And so then we're doing that again. I think you can do a couple more donations. Uh, feel, feel free this time uh, to just read donations till we get to the end again. All right, well, we have a lot of love for Aria uh, uh, Zero here, so no worries on that front. We have uh, $25 from Roto Monkey who says, Perfect Dark, hype! Hype! hype. We also have $40 from Mark who says, Perfect Dark is the best split screen game. So many guns, so many stimulants. Elvis is my spirit animal. <laughs> Uh, we also have uh, $50 from Inverse Skies, who said, I love Perfect Dark so much as a kid. Great to see it at SGDQ, but I have to ask, where's the cheese? <laughs> and I, uh, he's talking about an Easter egg that the developers put in this game. Every stage has a hidden slice of cheddar cheese with uh, just hidden randomly. If I would have thought about it, I could have shown some off. There's some just right on our way in our uh, path. But sadly, not for the rest of this game. All right, stop being slow, Elvis. Just come on. A couple more donations. For sure. Uh, Griffin Striker yep. donates $10, saying, you're doing a great job, Endeavor. Continue perfecting the dark and destroy this run. And I think, I think everyone in the audience can, here can agree that Zero is doing a great job. Let's get, let's get some uh, hype here. Let's get some applause. Let's go. Thank you very much. I love you, Griffin. We got time for one or two more here? Yep. Yeah, uh, throw in one more. We got it, we got it. Uh, Jordan slash the boarding party donates $25 saying, hey, Dev, show them how it's done. Proud of you for being such a great cause. Let's go. Yo. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jordan. I love you too. All right, we are finally heading back up to the end again. Let's, uh, let's hope Elvis gets a bit of better luck and uh, avoids fighting invisible enemies. Elevators. All right, that time it was pretty fast. I think that was because we were slightly faster ourselves. I'm not quite sure, but I don't think these elevators are ADA compliant, are they? <laughs> Probably not. All right, now, as I was about to say before he died, we have to kill these three as fast as possible. That will activate an invisible timer that when it runs out, Elvis will then come up here and join us, which will then activate another invisible timer for the final enemies to spawn. After we kill them, the mission ends. If we see Elvis, he, he survived. Uh, nice. thank, thank you very much, Elvis. Go, Elvis. All right, now this. Invisible timer is running. It can be anywhere between, I believe, like 8 to 12 seconds plus, And it seems to be on the longer side. Yeah, that is. All right, kill him first, and then two spawn on the right here. That second one was really good. This third one's really slow, but the mission's over. We can now move on. Nice. All right, these are the final mission of the main game. This will be normally where it ends, but because you very generous people donated to get the bonus missions in, we shall... Uh, have more perfect dark after this. There are 10 sets of these pillars that we have to get three thrown at. And you can identify them with the writer on the top right. Yeah, with these target amplifiers. The story is, uh, oh no. We, uh, we basically got the ship from them and went to their home planet. And because we apparently don't like these guys and we trust Elvis more, we're just going to casually kill their, their leader. So oh, 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 stop, stop, I preferably stop. Preferably not oh, no. trying. <laughs> Okay, I took way too much damage. I'm not even going to attempt this uh, glitch here. That's going to skip a lot. Yeah. That, that's unfortunate, but it's okay. We have enough health to do the rest of the stage. If as long as we don't get too too unlucky, uh, we can hug this wall here thanks to some interesting physics. We can normally just skip this block pushing puzzle by doing a rocket jump. Effectively, just boosting yourself over there with a little bit of damage. Yeah, if I had more health, I would have done it. 
uh, you can boot, you get a boost in speed with a explosive or a shot from behind. And I would have used uh, this grenade launcher I have in my inventory to do that, but sadly, I took way too much damage. To and I interestingly enough, the objective that we have to do there to actually do something, which is that block puzzle, uh, would have automatically completed if you boost over that area, because the devs intended you to not be able to reach that place without solving the puzzle, so it's just kind of a backup. And we sacrificed a weapon to the weapon god, and then we can go ahead and get to the final area. Yeah, we cannot open this door without sacrificing a weapon to that altar, so we just gave him our weakest gun. And this door we just opened, and the one that led to that uh, place where we had to sacrifice our weapon, those are random based on how many tries it can take to open. That first one was first try, and that second one was second try. That is extremely rare, so we had some good luck here. And here we need now to we take are... down the shields first of the boss before we can destroy these crystals. Nice. Uh, did, nah, you didn't get two in one. Oh, crap. They came out of nowhere. Are there any more that's going to come? <laughs> so, so. All right, so explaining this boss fight here, this is the Skedar King. We have to get, reduce his shields down to green, and then we have to shoot one of the five pillars behind him. We cannot shoot the pillars if the king's shield is red. And we cannot shoot that middle pillar until every other pillar is gone. But as soon as all that happens, nice. we just shoot the middle one, and he is gone, and we just beat the main game. So that's 44 52. All right, now uh, the bonus missions. These are just here in the game to set up some bonus plot points. Like one character gets kidnapped, but we don't know how. We play as other characters other than Joanna Dark in these missions, and we also have two objectives each. I'm going to be doing things in a very particular order here. We cannot be seen by any of these guards, so I'm going to stay invisible. I just have to plant a bomb in there, but instead of pressing a button, I just have to walk in there for just one frame, and it just plants the bomb automatically. And then so disable the cloaking to at a very specific point there, so the guards downstairs don't see you, but you need the remaining time on the cloak. So it's kind of really precise to get it correctly. Yeah, we need to stay cloaked because if they see us, they will activate this elevator later and lose a good chunk of time. So we don't want that. This elevator right here that would have been open right there would not have been open if they uh, notice us at the floor. So now we're just going to try to lure that guy. Okay, turn invisible again, unarmed. We have this bomb spy again that's just going to blow up that wall. Um, this is the person we're trying to kidnap. We're going to set up a very intricate glitch by Paul's buffering because otherwise it's really hard to push her. we got to push her to this set of stairs here. And if we get lucky, she's actually going to climb the stairs and warp to the top. It's about a 50-50 chance that she's going to warp. And on top of that, there's a 10% chance that if she warps... So instantly complete the final objective, which she did not do. Did she warp, though? She warped. Nice. Okay, that saved us some pushing we have to do. Really good. So we don't have to push her up here, but we still do. We have to push her from here to the top, though. It, it's weird how it works while she's warping through that staircase. She can just randomly just go really high in the air and touch this final uh, helipad up here for one frame, and that's enough to end the mission. But we did not get that part, but at least we got her to warp. And just like that, this mission's over. Nice. That, that mission's unlocked by beating the game on Agent. And now we're doing the bonus mission for beating the game on Special Agent. Mayan SOS, the most difficult mission in the game. We start out as a very tiny alien. But not Elvis. Not Elvis. And we're going to... Uh, and we lose half of our health due to them work, uh, like, just butchering us in our sleep. So we're really tiny and only half health, and we have to somehow survive this stage. On the perfect agent, the hardest difficulty, this stage is a nightmare. And it was also the only mission that uh, Big Boss Man from quite a few years ago on his perfect agent run, this was the only mission he died on. That's how just hard this mission is. But we're actually got this nice little safe strat here to help make the ending a little easier. If we leave this room specifically slow enough at 48 seconds, there's an elevator that's going to come near the end of the stage and help us avoid fighting a lot of enemies. 
And instead of blowing these guards up right here like we normally do in an IL, we're also just gonna shoot them and it's gonna distract some other guards in that final room as well. The final room, I call it the nightmare room because it is the bane of my existence. There's so many guards in here. And we made it really, really quick. That elevator is perfect. Nice. We'll either have anywhere between zero to two guards on the top floor here. Oh, looks like zero. We lucked nice. out. All right, this mission is just easy now. Easy mode. But otherwise, you go full Matrix mode. Dodge all the bullets. Yep. And get to the end. Basically, now we just got to just survive, which is easy enough. There's only one guard here and then one guard in front of the elevator. This elevator is the only elevator in the game that works weirdly this way. We cannot call it because if we call it, it will instantly go back up to the top floor no matter where it is. So we have no choice but to just sit here and wait for it to come to us by itself. But at the end, we're just going to be activating the distress signal because we're, we're the alien race and we want to get our other people to come with us. And then, sadly, as you're going to see, we're, we're, while we're going to make it to activate the distress beacon, the enemies are going to kill us anyway. We actually did really insane. No, no shot landed on us until the end. That's really good, even for Special Agent. All right, hardest mission done now. We are on war. There's two more missions to go. It takes place right after the final mission of the main game. We leveled their planet of the evil aliens, and now they cloned because why not? They cloned their king into two separate kings, so we just gotta go through here and kill those two separate kings. We are, again, a Mayan that is not Elvis. The only downside is because we are a Mayan, we're so weak, we cannot get meleeed. A melee equals instant death, so as long as we don't hug any Skedar, we are fine. One headshot will kill both kings, so that's what we try to line up. Spe uh, especially on that first one, we want to line up and get it sh done as fast as possible because he can melt us with his gun. Oh, whoa, we, that was a melee sound. He, <laughs> he meleeed us, but he missed. Whew. Gotta ignore him, ignore him. All these doors are random. They can take just one but try to open. They can take eight. It's up to them, and it looks like his first try for both of them. Let's go, let's uh, go. Nice. And we're down to the final mission. The we're, duel! We are hoping for sub 10 seconds if we can get it right. Time, All right. Let's time get it. Time is, uh, as soon as you see objective two complete, time. He dodges. And then we get to kill the other guy. And that's three, two, one. And time. Time. Well done. 8.88, anything under 10, I will take for that. Well done, under 10. Thank you, thank you. One little thing about uh, Jonathan there, the duel is just a bonus mission unrelated to any story mode. And Jonathan was placed there from a previous stage where he helps you, so in the duel, he is a good guy with a blue target, so therefore you can't auto-aim at him. He can't sh hit you with any bullets, but he can melee you. So as long as you don't stick next to him, he'll never kill you. And interestingly enough, it's like the duel you can also do on a different difficulty where you get a third enemy. But uh, I can attest that it's possible. I did it myself on second try earlier, and I absolutely suck at doing controller aiming. It's, it's really, really bad. But I think any final words, guys? I am proud of this run. Everything that could go uh, wrong went right, aside from attack ship. Overall, I'm just proud of the RNG of this mission. I am thankful for you guys for giving me the opportunity to finally show up the Xbox version of this game. It doesn't get as much love as it deserves. It's basically the perfection that is the N64 Perfect Dark, but just no lag. I mean, who, who doesn't want uh, no lag in their games, man? Moral support. <laughs> Look, the story is unique. I never knew, never knew about this. About aliens, cloning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, nap on. Let's go. Uh, yep. Thank you guys for watching. It was fun. All right, we love to see zero underscore IF just throwing on an absolute showcase. Can we get one more round of applause, please, for that excellent run? Just one last departing uh, donation here from 
Tockley, hope I pronounced that correctly, $25 saying, such good memories from Perfect Dark. So happy to see it in SGDQ. Delighted to be able to support the cause. All right, it's time for a little break, I think. So feel free to get up, stretch, and uh, yeah, escort your Elvises if you need to. And we'll see you right here on the other side. All right, and welcome back, everyone. Now, just as quickly as it came, my time on the mic for tonight is over, but fret not, because I'm going to leave you in the more than capable hands of Squidilla, and I will see you later on in the marathon for some Mario Party action on Wednesday. So I will see you all later, and I'm going to hand it on over to my good friend Squidilla.
All right, this is Squid Dilla here, and I'll be taking over hosting duties for the next two games. No, your eyes do not deceive you. We are back in person once again here, and it feels absolutely amazing. The energy has been electric. We've seen nothing but incredible runs so far, and I am excited to see just how much money we can raise by the end of the week for Doctors Without Borders. We are currently at $133,000, but I would love to see that number go up. I'd love to see it hit 135, maybe 140, maybe even $145,000 by the end of the next run. We can do it, I believe in us. Now up next, we're gonna be seeing one of my favorite video game marsupials, Crash Bandicoot, as he sets out to collect power crystals in Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. We're gonna be watching a 100% run being performed by Potty. So please go to the Games Done Quick website and get those donations in. Speaking of donations, I have a donation from Bag of Soup for $25 that simply says, hi Chet. I've got another donation from David for $75 that also says, hi. I've got a $25 donation from Millpool that says, super excited for the Crash 2 run. This was one of my favorites as a kid. I've also got a $25 anonymous donation. There's no comment, but hey, we appreciate the generosity. I've got a $10 donation from Big Bass that says, love and thanks to everyone who makes the event possible. Whether you're a volunteer, staff, runner, audience member, or part of Twitch chat, you matter. Oh, I love this name. I've got a $25 donation from Dando Calrissian that says, our family loves watching GDQ, and while we are so grateful that you all kept it running remotely, it feels so good to watch everyone crushing games and having fun together in person again. Thank you to everyone who works so hard to make this event possible. I've got a $25 donation from Balam Soldier that says, SGDQ is the best time of the year. Donating for an amazing cause and watching awesome runners go fast. I've got a $12 donation from Gamma Ray that says, so excited that GDQ is back in person. I can't wait for all these amazing runs and a wonderful week. All right, I've got a $25 donation, I hope I pronounced this right, from Kazaki that says, thank you, for, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. I've got a donation from Phil for $50 that says, great first day, keep up the good work. Oh wow, we have a $200 donation from Addis that says, so excited to be watching SGDQ again. Me too, Addis, me too.
I've got a $25 donation from Infernal Translator that says, let's break $3 million this, go this year. Let's go SGDQ. All right, I would like to take this time to talk a little bit about Doctors Without Borders, which is the reason we are here this week. Now, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization providing life-saving medical humanitarian care in over 70 countries around the world. MSF is committed to independence, impartiality, and neutrality. These principles are what make it possible for MSF to respond rapidly to emergencies and provide life-saving medical care in situations where many other organizations can't or won't. 90% of MSF's staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from the country where they work. He speeds through Crash 2, so get hoip, and let's have a round of applause for Potty, take us away!